artists and dreamers. We are proud to make some life worth living here in the Hello, welcome. I am Skix. Welcome to Here Comes the Weirdo Parade, an ongoing series where I will interview and chat with various weirdos around Salt Lake City, and perhaps if we get bigger, from around the world. For now, we have the great Demonio, or uh, will you introduce yourself, please? I'm actually, uh, he misspoke. Uh, my name is Javier Montalongo. <laughs> Right, uh, Demonio's manager? Yeah, you could say that, actually. Yeah. All right. Um, well, welcome. Can you tell us a bit about yourself? Well, I'm a Leo. Um, I'm originally from California. Um, I moved here in Salt Lake City, Utah, 97. Uh, actually, Sugar House. So I lived a good life back in those days. Um, I, I it took me a long time to get used to it. I think I like it now. After all these years, um, but yeah, I actually, originally I was supposed to be, uh, living in Mexico, actually. I'm born in California, but, uh, I was raised in Mexico for a bit. And then, uh, my mom had a second, you know, uh, she thought about it again and she's like, you know what, maybe California is better. So we went back so, a little bit about me. As this is a show about weirdos, I, I assume you're comfortable, uh, being called a weirdo. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, that's pretty accurate, I guess. Yeah, I've always liked doing pranks and all that stuff. I've always liked messing with people, so that's like perfect. So, yeah. Uh, do you find your 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 weirdoness, your weirdness, um, is a challenge in our society sometimes? <laughs> uh, yeah, certain things. Yeah. Um, I was just having a thought because I had no idea what this interview was about and I was going to ask, but I'm like, nah, I'd rather just not really think about it. But I was thinking of all these different scenarios and that was actually in my head. Um, yeah, um, it is. But I mean, uh, being funny and seeing certain things, it's always been hard. So, I mean, and no, if everybody was doing it or if it was that easy, everybody would be doing it pretty much. So, yeah, it's rough, but I've always been the same. I don't think I could ever change. So I, I still say what I want. So. I can't speak for everybody else, but for myself, I still, still the same. Can you uh, tell us a bit about the Great Demonio? Yeah, so yeah, the Great Demonio, yes. Um, yes, I, I love the Great Demonio, uh, what he ended up being actually, because uh, it was, I had this idea, this vision of a character, but I never knew what it, for what. I, I knew that uh, I wanted to uh, create a character, made just for fun. I used to like dressing up, um you know in halloween attire and stuff all the time so technically i was a cosplayer before even cosplaying was a thing um i would dress up in school too uh the shadow i don't know if you've ever seen the shadow oh yeah i was a huge shadow fan batman fan so i like dressing up as the shadows so anyways uh because of this i ended up creating uh, this character uh like i said i had no idea what it was but i know it was going to be something and my friend is a wrestler and he asked me one time uh one day he's like uh would you like to uh have a mask for you you know he's a wrestler and i'm thinking what am i gonna do with a wrestling mask so then i'm like you know what i'll just design one and just come out when i perform just as a joke and you know because i created a, a my own mask from scratch and um, and I kind of liked it, you know, and I'm thinking, you know what, maybe this is an upgrade. So then I just did it and I kind of, the mask stuck. And therefore it's a combination of all the things I like, pop culture. And I mean, technically Demonio is me, um, but uh, um, when people address me, I try to say, I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. So I kind of keep the, what is it called? Kayfabe? Kayfabe, yeah. <laughs> Kayfabe, yeah. So, um, but yeah, um, I don't take it that serious, but I, I, I just do it for fun. I think it's hilarious for people that I, like actually the last show that we did, this one performer said, oh, that's you? I'm like, cause they've always seen me either with the mask. And, and I kind of like that. I've always kind of liked that. And anyways, it started off as a joke and Demonio, the name actually itself was, I was doing open mic night a while back and somebody asked me, what's your name? And I'm thinking, I don't want to use my real name because well, I don't like people knowing a lot about me anyways, uh, but I don't, I just didn't think 
Javier would have been cool. You know, it's just like, I don't know. Maybe now, maybe now in 2022, maybe that's the thing, but I just never liked it. So I, I said uh, Demonio because I would call my niece and nephew little demons. <laughs> like, yeah, I would call them little demons and I'd call my friends. Anybody that's close, I always call them nicknames. Doesn't matter. Well, actually, even, even if you're not close, I still call people nicknames. Uh, but I would always call my friends demons and then it just stuck and I'm like, you know what? Well, I'll call myself Demonio as, you know, it's like I'm the biggest one. So um, that's how it started with the name. And then the act, believe it or not, uh, I was watching Dexter, uh, the, the series, have you seen it? Yeah. Yeah, huge fan. And there was a, I like the way that he would uh, kill his victims, like the way that he would do it. Not necessarily kill, I would call it cleanse, but anyways. <laughs> Um, I, I really like the, the kill sequences and the visuals and all that. And I created a trick based off of, based off of that. And then from there on out, I figured out, it's like, wait a minute, why don't I just use like the knowledge that I have for horror films and like comedy. And I mean, Demonia was really inspired by Dexter, Andy Kaufman, definitely earlier. Demonia was Andy Kaufman for sure. Like, like very inspired by it. Uh, Mass Magicians. Uh, have you seen the Mass Magicians? I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, huge fan of those guys, and because uh, there have been multiple. Um, and what else? Uh, Pee Wee Herman. Uh, Pee Wee Herman. Amazing Jonathan was actually. That's what. Also, uh, Amazing Jonathan was another one that uh, cemented uh, how I wanted to approach magic. Because uh, magic, I didn't like the look at me showy thing. You know, it's like they're doing billions of cards, you know, coming out, and it's like, yeah, that's cool. You know, it's like it's kind of like the mentality of like a pickpocket. You know, the skill, you appreciate it, but it's like, well, you, you were just you got fast hands, you know. And when people think like that, it's like if magic makes you think of it as a puzzle or a uh, like, yeah, you're a mechanic. Those two things bother me because that cheapens everything. I think as a magician, I think it cheapens you um, because it, well, I, it's, it's contradicting because yeah, you put in all these hours of, uh, of sleight of hand, but what good is it if you can't translate that to your audience? You know what I mean? It's like, you might as well just be performing for yourself in the mirror because, you know, I don't like that. You know, I like to perform for a live audience and um, because of all of this in a, in a spite, definitely spite, uh, spite was another big thing and things I don't like about magicians and that was another thing that made even the demonial character because it's technically I'm an anti-magician um, and, and I didn't realize that but that's what I kind of wanted because I don't want the look at me I want like I want this all to be an experience like uh, I had a podcast and it talked specifically about that but um, I really, I really think that magic, any art really, but in magic, I think that that gets lost a lot of the times. It's more like a ego driven. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it bothers me so much. And I think it should be more of you and the, uh, yeah. You a special I, thing I can do. Right, right. Sarah Silverman said it best. I respect, I'm not a fan of her comedy, but uh, I respect what she said about magicians. And she hit it perfectly. She said, uh, uh, she hates magicians because they're like nothing. You're, they're like, they produce produce me a sandwich or something like that. I think that was Hannibal Perez. But anyways, she pretty much poked fun at the fact that magicians, they think they're they think they're so high up there, but they're like nothing. They're just like a doctor. You're, they're not, I mean, you're not a doctor is what I'm trying to say. Right, right, right. You're just a magician, you know? So yeah, that tells you something right there. It's eye opening because they're like, magicians are so full of themselves. And uh, anyways, I want nothing to do with any of that, you know, and that's why I don't identify as a magician a lot of the times. It's like I, I don't identify as one. Um, I think another problem I have with magic too is that there is no schooling. For, well, yeah, there is schooling, but it's not like a you go to college and you and this is what makes you such and such. You know, you are now a magician. Anybody can buy hundreds of dollars worth of magic and and just read the script, which. Yeah. There is quite a few of them that do that. Oh, yeah. They read the script and they just stick to it, you know? And it's like, I mean, I guess if you want to be a karaoke magician, then, then go ahead, so be it. You know, I get this 
uh, different uh, perspective in magic and I get to keep that, you know? So um, I know I'm not for magicians and I'm glad because that means nobody's gonna rip me off. So I love that. <laughs> uh, true, no one could uh, rip you off. Uh, and despite they all that, you are a member of IBM. Yes, I am. Yeah, I was actually a, a <laughs> I was a president. I didn't want to do it, but I wanted to do it for for my my uh, <clears throat> what's it called for my friends. Like I figured I'd do my part, you know, as much as I because it was hard. Like I don't like being part of groups. Like I don't like it. It's just not me. I've always been just me. I think I just got so much going on that it's almost work to be part of groups sometimes. And, and what I mean by that is not talking like doing shows, but like just in general, you know, like I've always liked things here and there. So I can never be generalized in a certain thing because I have so many things I like. I like music. I mean, I, music is probably my, my drug. I mean, my music is like an obsession. So I get the best of both worlds. I get to be my DJ for my own show, so. Right. Have you always done it that way, or? Um, in the beginning, no, because I was trying to understand who I was. I mean, it took me years, uh, almost like 14 years, to figure out what, how I wanted, what, what direction I wanted to go to. So, I mean, Demonio, honestly, is just came out in 2018. Um, and that was an experiment. I mean, that, all of that was an experimentation, um, but yeah it's taken me years because i i like close-up magic that's another thing close-up magic you don't really get that many that many good paid gigs it's mainly like the big shows you know um but i mean there, there are good gigs out there you just gotta find them but for general rule though you don't really for the most part you don't that's not how you make a lot of money you know unless you're i don't know you got the right credentials and then you got you meet the right people um but um for the most part though close-up is really not a um, marketable thing, especially here in Utah. Um, but I love close-up, I still do. Um, but as Demonio, that was another thing. I never wanted to perform on stage. I never did. I was meant to just be close-up because to me, close-up, it's more pure. Um, it's more pure style because somebody catches you, you're screwed, you know, like, uh, but I've worked really hard. I, I've worked with really hard uh, groups at the very beginning. And that dictated my how I want to perform for people because I'm like if they call me out, I mean what can I do? I could either punch them, <laughs> which I have thought of that, and it almost came down to that. But that was when I was younger. What's that? It can be tempting. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, uh, yeah, I, I used to be a very naughty boy back in the days. I still am, but not as like that. But I learned. Um, but it was cool though because now, I mean, any crowd I go to, it's so easy because I started really uh, with really rough people you know like they'll they just don't play along you know what i mean it's like they don't play around like that so i like that you know i learned right away because it's like yeah if you treat people the way they're supposed to be treated and if you can read the room that's going to be the best part that, that's going to help you you know in any type of performance you know so yeah so i don't know if that answered your question but that's how demonio started spite spite for magicians <laughs> And uh, for the viewers, I'm going to play a short clip of uh, Demonio oh. with your permission. Yeah. Um, As you can see here, the great Demonio has a face only a mother can love. <laughs> now, for his first trick. A regular snot rat. Nothing there. And not much here. Nothing up his human skin sleeves. Who, by raise of hands, likes birds. Watch. Ta-da! Bird, see? He wrote bird to you skeptics out there. The great Demonio loves birds too. Especially with 11 herbs and spices. He named her Rotisserie. We think it's French. For those of you that are offended, know that the great Demonium loves all of nature's beautiful creatures, smothered with gravy and a side of mashed potatoes. Hey, if animals don't want to be eaten, then why are they made of food? 
but seriously, animals have a special place in his stomach. No, no, he would never hurt an animal. He's more of a people person. This is unfair. Living in Utah as we do, mm. it's a very white community. Yes. Has, has that difference affected you at all? Um, you think? I, that's a good question. I don't know, man, because I performed at uh, Logan, and I'm thinking, look, I performed a very, uh, a, a, a very controversial piece. Actually, speaking of Dexter, it was Dexter inspired. And I, I was shocked. I, I'm really not praising it. I'm more su surprised 
Logan, I thought, it was, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it, does it sound conservative to you? Yes. Logan? Okay. So Logan is very conservative LDS area. And I did this act where I desecrate uh, a uh, stuffed animal. And I actually- I think I've seen it. that bit. Yeah, I toned it down though, because I was gonna add a drugging part and then more graphic things. And my, I, at the time I had no idea, right when I got to the gig, he says, so you have a family friendly act. And I'm like, wait, what? I'm like a family friendly act. I'm like, this was only for practice. This was a competition. Okay. So this was a competition and I was just trying this out at Logan. And I'm thinking right when I got there, I should have thought of this, right? I didn't, I never been to Logan before. It's my first time. I found out this when I got there, they're very conservative, it's a very beautiful area. But then I had a take out a lot of the act and then um anyways uh when i did it i didn't know this but i i probably would have won first place but i went one second away from um uh, from the seven minutes i think it was but i was just practicing for a following competition anyways to answer your question at the end i was shocked i don't understand this this is when I knew I had potential, uh, and this is why your answer, your question is kind of, uh, it, it, it makes me think differently because I won People's Choice Award, uh, the People's Choice. Ooh. So I would have won first place in People's Choice in a conservative conservative area, and I don't understand it to this day. Um, I think it's how you, I don't know, I, if you have like a political statement, maybe that might have, that might have, I don't know, maybe I would have seen what you're asking, but I was just there for the art, you know, and I think people just were mesmerized by that, that I don't, I don't, I don't know if, I don't know if that's a thing, you know, I, I know what you mean, but I don't really see it, you know, I, I see what you're saying though, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I haven't seen that. If anything, I've seen it for other things, but performance wise, I think uh, that's one thing that I'm very proud of is that I think it makes it engaging and maybe, I mean, technically I'm doing what we're all supposed to be doing without even noticing this until I mentioned this now is keeping people away from thinking outside. You know what I mean? It's their all engagement is there. And I don't mean that as myself, but I have a recording and the way that I structured it was for everybody to be paying attention. So you know what I mean? And, and, I, and, and I say this because I have a love for movies, uh, music and all this stuff and I incorporated it. And I mean, I love writing. And I mean, a lot of that is my writing. So I mean, technically I may not be there physically, but I'm still there performing because it took me years to figure this writing. I mean, I wrote ideas before I even knew about Demonium that I knew one day I might do a, a comedy piece or maybe a story, but I kept these things in and it all just went together. So yeah, to answer your <laughs> your question, did I answer it? Yeah, I think so. Uh, and, and I think uh, Demonio sort of transcends categories a lot too. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, yeah. Uh, and I guess technically it could be its own genre, I guess. So that, thank you. That's actually a compliment. I never thought of it that way. I, uh, I first saw you, I think it was uh, probably an early Circus of the Strange. It, it was would have been 2019 or so, and probably at the Beehive. Um, and and I, I immediately, as I think a lot of people um, react, like, what the hell's going on here? And then, uh, and then I, I certainly got got drawn into it, and it was probably the most memorable memorable act of the night. Um, and every chance I've been able to, I've invited you into my shows. Uh, I remember you did sort of an abbreviated version at uh, the Silly Slam in the the tiny tiny little puppet theater. Uh, oh yes. I wasn't sure how that scale would affect you, but you 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 managed just fine. Yeah. Um, if someone were interested in booking the Demonio, how would what would be the best way to reach you? Uh, TheGreatDemonio.com. Um, it's got all my information on there. I, I need to update it probably after this interview, probably. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always there. A lot of it is low key. Like I don't really push it because uh, it's not that I don't want to. It's just that uh, a lot of the times, a lot of the gigs that I get are just word of mouth. So sure. Yeah. Um, on the business end, financially, what percentage uh, would you say uh, performing as Demonio is supporting you? 
Not a lot. <laughs> Not a lot. <laughs> no, and, and that's the thing too, because my friend who I've worked with, and he's he was pretty much like a mentor to me. I was a sound his his sound tech, pretty much his roadie, and he he told me a lot of things, and I I still to this day have practiced them. You know, like being on time and arriving to the gig early because there's so many things that uh. Uh, that can happen, and that's actually where my anxiety happens. Actually, it's it's not actually performing. The performance, it's funny because I learned this from Paul Draper. Uh, he said, uh, my my treat into like booking all these shows and all that, it like my prize at the end of the all of that is performing. And it's like I couldn't agree with him anymore because my anxiety level and like my my, my stress and all that stuff, it's like the day before or like actually hours before the show. Like I want to make sure everything is right, you know, like traffic. I want to know what the venue is and all that stuff. Once I figure all that out, then I can relax. But yeah, that's not where my nerves and all that stuff happens. It's, when I'm performing, that's like I, I'm like enjoying it. It's like the best part, you know. To me, I don't get I don't get nervous like that, but I do get nervous before. That's where all my nerves start, you know. But anyways, um, not a lot. And, and anyways, my friend that I worked for years, he said, you know, you should probably. Uh, get rid of the mask and uh, perform and i'm like well i have technically i do stuff without my mask too i get i get corporate gigs and for years i have gigs yearly um i'm and that's the thing too is like they sprinkle in here and there and then um and then then there's nothing in between and then that's kind of good for me because it helps me create a new routine so I'm not making a lot right now, but that's because I have been uh, I haven't been pushing it more. Um, I'm trying to be pro, uh, I guess, <laughs> by this year. Uh, but I mean, technically, I've been semi pro. I guess the right, correct word would be full time pro, because a lot of the gigs I have, they just kind of sprinkle in and here and there. Um, but yes, yeah, so I don't make a lot, but that's just because I haven't put in the definitely haven't put in more work that I should be. And but like I said, uh. Uh, I, and also COVID, uh, COVID hit, and that's actually when I was trying to become pro. It, technically, I mean, it's still Me affecting us anyways, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, which sounds like a crazy thing to do, but honestly, the, the lockdown inspired me that I need to live my life and uh, what am I doing with it, you know? So I think COVID and the lockdown and everything, because uh, artistically and even like as a emotionally and just ev everything, it just, it's like it opened my chakra you know and it just uh it was awesome it, it to me the, the the lockdown was the best thing ever so uh, a lot of my artist friends have have a similar experience you know really I, I do too yeah really i was I mean, thinking i was crazy okay well you are but not <laughs> yeah, because yeah. of that um sure, yeah. yeah i mean it, it really shut a lot of things down it shut down a lot of gigs i had planned but it did sort of push me into the what the fuck stage yeah um yeah. you know uh I'm going to go for it. Um, yeah. And as for the business end, I, I know a certain percentage of, of viewers are going to be people trying to get a start. Um, everybody's got a different experience, but got to say, be real. Most right. people have a day job. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and that was another thing, too. I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I had a secure job. I had benefits, all this stuff, you know, what you want as, a, as an adult, right? Um, I had all that. And... Uh, I, I gave that up because it was killing me like in every sense I hated it um, because um, there was a, a thing that happened and then it made me it, like shifted my perspective so my perspective already was shifted even before lockdown but lockdown just cemented that you know it's like I need a I need to actually just think this way you know instead of being in my head so anyways I already had these feelings uh, from working at this place and I hated it, but it inspired, it was like, there's a lyric I like, it's like, it goes, uh, you don't know pain, you don't know peace till you had suffering. And it's like, man, those five years, that's what inspired a lot of my routines and uh, a lot of my, uh, a lot of the art that was demonial. So those were like years of uh, torture, pretty much. Yes, but they were good though. I'm glad I had them. Otherwise I wouldn't be talking to you because um yeah definitely the artistic part is what uh it's what drives me um but now i, I have to like be better at the at, at the marketing part but like i said um i focus more on the art part now it's time to focus on the work part so I, a lot of us fight that part the hardest oh man you have no idea yeah i struggle with that and that's the only reason why it kept me from being full-time is because 
I, I first my biggest fear is hating my art like th I think that's why I'm okay and I've been okay that I have gigs that are sprinkled in because like I said it technically I have three characters uh, I have other characters I go as in myself for corporate gigs walk around stuff whatever uh, professional you know and then I go as demonial with other you know like such as your uh, the ones that you provide um, and then um, I go as a wizard and that one's like perfect because that one can identify more with kids and it's like a different set of magic too which I get to experiment with so I get three different because technically all the characters do different magic so I get to experiment you know the wizard is more elemental then demonia is more like a uh, pop culture and horror film uh, horror film theme you know and then myself I'm all of that but I just I just show it differently I, I like to see your wizard at some point yeah yeah I'm, i think this year if i they said i wanted to do it again but i don't want to assume that's one thing i don't want to assume is I'll, I'll be talking to them pretty soon i have these ideas but i set this pumpkin patch pumpkin patch and I'll, I'll send invites and all that stuff but it's cool i, I really like that one because that one definitely uh wasn't uh, <laughs> that's a cool character because i get to do stuff that i want to do as as the other two characters but i can't because it's just like it doesn't make sense you know you can't uh you can't be sawing a lady in half i mean you can as a wizard but this wouldn't make sense you know Same, yeah. yeah so that's why i like these characters because they i put limitations on them like what would they do you know instead of saying what could i do you know like like just doing the tricks for the sake of it you know what i mean it has to be uh practical first practicality and then it has to be uh you know everybody can relate to you know do i need to talk or does the actions uh speak louder you know what i mean that one is actually a combination of demonio and myself because i do talk on that one but i have a weird voice and i try not to talk but uh it, when people say stuff i have to talk so yeah uh, maybe next time i do a kid-friendly show maybe I'll, <laughs> I'll see if you can come play with us okay all right um all right i think that covers everything uh i need uh do you have anything coming up that you want to plug um i mean the stuff that i have coming up it's all private it's it's for like uh what do they call them private uh private gigs so uh, the only one that I have is that pumpkin patch one. It's the Kuhara pumpkin patch. I should, I mean, don't just disregard what I just said, but I should be there. But regardless, if you go to my website, it'll be posted there. So. That's greatdemonio.com? Greatdemonio.com, yes. Thegreatdemonio.com. Yes. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you. And we'll see you later for the Weirdo Parade. Thanks for having me. Thank God you. God bless you all. God save the king. Yeah. I'm bad. You're 